Any other questions I can? Um, yes. This might be a moot point, but mm -hmm. if you survive and finish the residency program. Like if I survive, yeah. that's true. <laughs> <laughs> Take it into whatever, you know, you're going yeah. to put halfway through. Uh -huh. Are you pretty much guaranteed a position in some hospital somewhere? Yes, you, you are. Yeah, so um, that, that would just basically lead to the question, how many neurosurgeons per population? And the goal um, of Medicare is to have one neurosurgeon for 92,000 Americans. And we are like in nearly 200. So it's like one per 200 right now. So there, you basically have guaranteed a job somewhere. Um, I get a lot of offers at home like, Every day, I get an offer to join some practice, wherever, and and you, you'll start learning what states offer more and what states offer less as you go along. But um, in general, I would say even probably the worst neurosurgeon would be offered a job somewhere. And God forbid, I'm not saying you'd be the worst. <laughs> no, but it's. It, yeah, there's there's plenty of neurosurgical jobs all over the country. Yes, all over. What are qualifications for residency? Um, Especially in the first two years of the medical education. I would say do very well on neuroscience and um, try to learn for life. And I gave a talk like this. Um, I remember kind of like when I was in med school, and it was to other medical students. And I think the, the important part when you're in med school is to try to learn for life. And if you put that mindset, you will remember much more f besides your exams. You'll remember for your USMLE, and it's very important that you do high. You have to probably get, I'm not very sure, but I think you need to be somewhere like at least the 95th percentile on your USMLE score to go into neurosurgery. And it's not very difficult to do that. Um, if, you, if you take that in your mind and when you're studying, you say, this is not for my exam, but you're learning it forever. So you remember much more. And um, that's very helpful. Another thing, so USMLE scores. Um, I would say somewhere between the nine, anywhere above the 90th percentile, you probably would be offered a, a uh, some type of maybe interview somewhere, and I think you would probably be guaranteed a position if you had if you were in the 95th percentile and above. Um, alpha omega alpha, how much does that help? You know, I think it helps. Um, I was inducted as a third year medical student into Alpha Omega Alpha and they take into account and when we were putting the two thousand this was when I whatever when I was in med school but we analyzed those students that would be considered for the next year's Alpha Omega Alpha and we take into account more than just grades so it's grades it's community service, and all this de varies depending on institution. Board scores, your USMLE step one is taken into account. And um, there was like four, four areas that we really, I'm missing one of them, but there were four areas that we, we looked at. And so, um, it's, it had, there were students inside that were not in the 95th percentile in the class, for example, that were in Alpha Omega Alpha. So I, I don't think that one should give up hope if you're in the top, say, top quarter of your class. Um, or even if you're not in the top quarter of your class, but you have a huge desire to do neurosurgery, you know, go ahead. And I'll be honest, don't use your first semester of your first year, or even the, the first half of your year to judge how you will do throughout medical school. And I can tell you that for myself. I loved anatomy, but you know, hey, in the beginning, it just didn't stick. And I'll be honest, 
and it didn't stick, you know. And so I, I was very difficult to remember all the things. And I remember walking into the lab, and there was like so many freaking labels, and I was like, oh my god, like, well, how am I going to remember all this? But you know, after after a while, as you go through, you know, and I got to be in anatomy. And there were people who had A's, and I was like, I was devastated. I was like, you know, I want to do neurosurgery, and I can't believe this. And I remember my dad, my, my father's a professor, and he said, Chaim, don't let that, you know, get you. Just keep going. And so, you know, you keep going. And, and um, as long as you have a st strong support group, you know, amongst yourselves, amongst your friends, I think that helps a lot. And you will do better and better and better. And um, re remember, not everyone has the same educational background as you did. And everyone varies. So perhaps some, some people have a, 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 an advantage because they took an anatomy class that you never took. Or they took a histology class or an embryology class that you never took. But now, once you have those basics, and the next year, you're going to do pathology, which is basically diseases of the normal areas that you already learned the prior year. You'll excel, and you, you'll do terrific. So I, I would say I wouldn't take that into account when it comes into learning um, and figuring out a career and trying to evaluate yourself based on how you do in your first semester or even second semester i i don't know how how does i don't know how i'm sorry uh, i'll ask you how does wayne state do, how, how are your classes do you have like a neuroscience class and that just neuroscience or do you have neuroscience together with other things uh, it's, it's not integrated okay okay uh -huh. and then so you have like biochemistry separate uh, like a like a block a biochemistry block and then and then you take a shelf exam no. We have three exams for biochemistry, three for physiology. And then at the end, do you take a shelf exam? Uh -huh. No. The shelf exams are during the uh, clinical years. Like oh. If you rotate through something, there's the shelf exam after. Oh, really? But we don't mm. have them specifically after each subject. Mm. Yeah, I think shelf exams, even on the basic material, actually ha can help. I, I, uh, I'm a strong believer of the shelf exam. It's from... Uh, the you know basically from the medical schools of the United States and so uh, LCGME and so if you if you know the material that's in there very similar material comes on your USMLE and so I think that's beneficial. Where did you get your MD? Like Puerto Rico University of Puerto Rico School of Medicine. I grew up in Puerto Rico uh, for most of my life, so I speak Spanish too. Yeah, I'm originally from New York, and then my parents moved to Puerto Rico when I was like eight and a half years old. I grew up there until uh, r recently. So, yeah. Um, we 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 took uh, we had uh, shelf exams uh, at the end of each each block. Uh, we were expected to um, know basically everything for our sheriff exam. If we did below a 70, I, I think that you had to repeat the course on, on a particular block. We had blocks set up similar to here. And, um, but I, looking back, I think the shelf exams really helped me a lot for preparing for the USMLE because a lot of the questions that I remember from the shelf were those very similar to those that came on the USMLE, step one. And so that, that might be helpful. Yes. <laughs> it was interesting. It was in, in both. Um, it was both. We had English and we had Spanish. Um, it, during the, the clinical years, it was mostly Spanish. Of course, you had to um, talk to your patients in Spanish. But uh, to begin with, um, we had a lot of English and we had a lot of Spanish. It depended on the professor. During the second year of medical school, most was Spanish, and um, w which wasn't wasn't bad. I I, I love the island. I have, yeah, it's a great place. <laughs>